This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet take place on the Iberian Peninsula, which has a lot of rich history, including total takeovers, countless kingdoms, and radical revolutions. But that's all recent. What if we go way back? We're talking the age of dinosaurs. What was it like then? Well, it certainly looked a lot different. Ultimately, what I'm getting at, though, is the topic of today's video. What are some possible Gen 9 fossil Pokemon? Most generations introduce two lines of fossil Pokemon, which are based on extinct animals that we only know about thanks to their fossil record. And most recently, the Gen 8 fossils were unique in that they are all a mishmash of fossils, referencing the real bone wars at British dinosaur museums of yesteryear. So since they were all super inherently British, fitting of Galar, which is based on Great Britain, what are some inherently Iberian, meaning Spanish or Portuguese, fossil things that we might find in a Gen 9 fossil Pokémon? Well, after a load of research, these are my two favorite ideas or predictions, if you will, and I hope you like them. But first, hey, are you a dinosaur? Then why are you making websites without the help of today's sponsor, Squarespace? Back when Siglophyces walked the earth, web design was all about math and code and sparkly low-res GIFs. But thanks to Squarespace's best-in-class web templates, setting up an online portfolio, store, organization, or anything is as easy as swapping text and images. You can go deeper if you want, but you don't need to, and that's exactly why I love it. Which is why I set up my own merch store using it. That's already a perfect example but we also threw this dinosaur fan page together in mere minutes. So if you're in need of a professional web page of any kind, check out squarespace.com and get a free trial to build your site, and then head to squarespace.com slash lockstenoggin and use the code lockstenoggin to get 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. I like dinosaurs. They're easily the best fossil Pokemon. Like what? A trilobite? What, what even is this? Garbage is the answer. Give me dinosaurs. Now, while there are plenty of Pokemon with Ankylosaur elements, there isn't a real Ankylosaur fossil Pokemon. And the Europelta carbonensis fits that bill perfectly, as it's a nodosaur that lived in what is now Spain in the early Cretaceous. Its fossil is actually the most complete Ankylosaur fossil we've yet to find in all of Europe. And look at this! That's amazing! And there are a few other related fossils that are also incredibly well preserved. I mean, we know so much about dinosaurs as a whole thanks to these fossils specifically. So already, it is perfectly worthy of being a fossil Pokémon. Europelta means European shield, so I can definitely see some historic Kingdom of Spain shield motifs thrown into its design, as in, literally. Look at that. So the first thing that comes to mind is a good rock steel type for sure, as remember, all fossil Pokemon are part rock type, the only exceptions being those Gen 8 weirdos. And actually, this shield idea would make it fit well alongside other dinosaur Pokemon, such as the Gen 4 fossil Pokemon, who similarly have medieval elements thrown into their designs. In short, they are a battering ram and a castle wall, a bastion. And I really like that, so let's do a little, let's do a little callback. More dinosaur fossil Pokemon based on medieval things. Heck, Tyrantrum's a Tyrant King, and Aurorus is the Snow Queen. But back to our friend Carbonensis, what's with that species name, Carbonensis? Well, it's a reference to the coal company that owned the land it was discovered on. Yeah, we were just digging up fossil fuels and we found a fossil. What a mighty coinkydink. But it does give me another idea, a better one than Rock Steel. Rock Fire could be a fun type combo too. Or perhaps Rock Steel, but it learns plenty of fire moves, or the other way around. Yeah, let's go with that. Rock Fire, and it learns lots of steel moves. And you know what Spain and Portugal did in the 1400s that revolutionized the world forever? They invented the gun, or rather the first portable shoulder arms firearm, the arc, 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 Man, I spent so long learning old English and before that learning like Hawaiian and so much Japanese. Now I have to learn Spanish pronunciations. Arquibus. Google tells me it's pronounced Arquibus. Uh, anyway, cannons existed before, yes, even cannons that you could carry, but now this was really like the first rifle, the first shoulder firearm, and medieval warfare was never the same. You could say this was the beginning of the end, like how all dinosaurs met their end, and now I'm just trying to come up with more connections on the spot. But hey, you use charcoal as an ingredient in black gunpowder, hence that connection there too. And actually, in the 
the 1540s, the Portuguese sold guns to Japan, leading to samurai gunmen for the first time. Meaning, yeah, they changed a lot of Japanese history too, so I can totally see Game Freak doing something like this. My initial idea was to have an upright ankylosaur with gun hands, but Rhyperior kinda already does that, and it even already kinda has an inky tail too. So maybe instead of adding more direct references to guns in this game for school kids, let's do those classic barrels of gunpowder. No more beating around the barrel of e explosion. I I'm, I'm gonna introduce the Pokemon now. This is Kiarbon, or Kiarbon. Kiarbon! And of course, huge thanks to Virgilophus, who I commissioned for this art because I can't draw. Kiarbon is a saboteur ankylosaurid with a tail resembling a barrel of gunpowder, ready to slam into an opponent and explode. It's an extremely powerful signature move, Barrel Blast. And it itself is safe from this explosion thanks to its shield and heavy armor. However, it now has an exploded tail. It can only do this attack once, like a Z-move. It's also almost like a lizard losing its tail, and it needs to grow back the explody bits now. However, it is still able to use the move Barrel Blast. It's just significantly weaker now. But you see, without the explosive barrel on the end of its tail, well, now you see another kind of barrel. It looks like the barrel of an old gun. Though it's technically an open wound, but it's one that can shoot molten rock or flame out of it. It's the same stuff that it fills that barrel with, just in significantly smaller amounts. I'm very proud of this name too. It combines carbon, both as a reference to the specific name of the specific dinosaur, Carbonensis, as well as the carbon used in gunpowder. The Kia is from Ankylosaur, of course, and the R is from Barrel, both the barrel of gunpowder and the barrel of its gun tail. And when together it sounds kind of like a mix-up of Baron as well, a type of nobility that was used across Europe. Makes it sound a bit intimidating. Also sounds like KABOOM! Well, along with guns, this region also changed the Middle Ages forever with another invention, Toledo Steel. Invented in Toledo, Spain, Toledo Steel was an unusually hard steel great for sword making, and a rival only to Damascus Steel. El Cid, a famous knight from the area, used swords made of it. And so, our next fossil mon should definitely reference this steel, and perhaps rather than a gun, it should be a sword. Also, this would help us go along with the motif of a four-legged defensive fossil and a two-legged attacky one. So let's look at an uprighty one next. This is the Pelicanomimus. It was a very early Ornithomimosaurian from about 130 million years ago and is from what is Spain today. It's particularly small for a dinosaur of its kind though, a little cutie. What makes it so noteworthy, however, is that it is the theropod with the most teeth. Just the most teeth of any theropod dinosaur. 220 of them. Yeah, terrifying, right? Right? Especially since most Ornithisomimosaurs don't have any normally. And the only other one that does have teeth, the Harpy Mimus, only had 11. And only on the lower jaw, as the upper jaw was a plate. Think like goats and cows. 220 teeth, jeez. Granted, they were pretty tiny and were also very close together, leading paleontologists to think that they were primarily used for cutting and ripping with a very fine serrated blade. They probably used them to grab onto guts after stabbing its face deep inside its prey, because this thing, oh, it had a snoop. Its head is incredibly long and skinny, with a length 4.5 times longer than it is high. Which reminds me of another famous Spanish invention that changed the late Middle Ages forever, the rapier. Extremely thin swords used for stabbing and, of course, the sport of fencing. Many of them had very ornate designs around their handguards, and maybe your mind just clicked ornate. Ornithomimosaurian. <laughs> All right, when I say it like that, maybe maybe that connection isn't as obvious. They both start with O, there's that. Ornate Mimosaurian. Right? Anyway, they had lots of pretty feathers. And those feathers could totally be ruffled and swirled to resemble the guards, right? Yeah, so I want to go with like a rock dark or maybe rock steel type this time for real, you know? You know what? Yeah, rock steel, but it learns plenty of dark type moves. I call this idea Ornamine. An ornate Pelicanomimus, which is an Ornithomimosaurian. Well, it's also mean, like a classic rapier wielding villain, except it's a dinosaur. Their neck feathers shake and dazzle the opponent as it dexterously moves its sharp snoot around, rapidly piercing its prey repeatedly. And the design along the edges of the collar, of course, resemble those ornate handguards on the rapiers of nobles that I talked about. And this little snoot on its little snoot resembles a 
fancy moustache, and it's holding its hand close to its chest, a proper sword's stance, and its wing feathers resemble a cloak or cape. Using your cloak in your offhand while sparring was incredibly common at the time. You can use it to catch your opponent's sword and yank it from their hand. This, of course, would lead to the term and technique known as cloak and dagger, which tends to be associated with trickery and mystery, intrigue, thieves, especially of the classier variety, mm-hmm, mustache twirl. Orno means signature ability, sword dancer, notice the er, it makes it different from the move swords dance, uh, it gives it a free swords dance upon entering the battlefield, as well as whenever it defeats an opponent, or perhaps it has a signature move, furia, Spanish for fury. It's a fluttering of strikes from its sharp beak, essentially it's a stronger steel type fury attack. Quite simple really. So now putting them both on the screen at the same time, what do you think of these ideas? Are they Spanish enough? Are they fossil-y enough? Do you think these would fit in with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? What do you think of these two ideas? I actually quite love them, and I love how their art turned out. Link to the artist's page down below. And while you're down there, be sure to check out our sponsor. And until next time, never stop using your noggin. Why did I start talking with an accent? This isn't even like a Spanish accent.